Whenever you mention Portuguese wines, people automatically think of things like Port, Matias Rosé, and even the Vino Verde. Now, considering the size of Portugal, Portugal has a remarkable amount of diverse wines, most of them largely undiscovered. Here in the Alentejo region, they produce some of the finest, so I've come to Herdado de Esparaul estate to try some. Okay, Mr. Bavistock, head winemaker. Probably got you out of the office, have I? Yeah, well, it's um, it's a good thing. I should spend more time out here in the vineyard, so um, it's it's good actually to be able to get here, get out here, and look at the fruit quality. Mm. But you're the man to show me how to pick grapes. I've never done it before. Yeah, well, I don't do much, too much of it these days. But um, <laughs> you're not rusty. Let's see how we go. Okay, what do I need to do first? Well, you just basically pick, pick up the the bunch of grapes from below. Yeah. Come in from behind and and snip them off at the stem. Oh, that's straightforward. Okay, isn't it? very very straightforward. Right, and I, I can hear lots and lots of noise at the back. So there's obviously a lot of people. Get my hand on A lot of people yeah. picking grapes. How many people do you have all together? Uh, we've got about 120 people picking here at the moment. 120? We've got uh, something like 500 hectares of vineyard. Um, so it's, it's, it's probably the biggest single vineyard holding in the country. It's quite a mammoth task then. Yeah, um, and uh, we try and get through it uh, as quickly as we can. Yeah. How, how long will it take? It'll take about six it's weeks. Six to, weeks to, with yeah. that amount of uh, yeah. labour force. Yeah. What type of grapes are they? This is a, this is a grape variety called Trincadeira. Trincadeira. Which is a local Portuguese grape. Yeah. And uh, it's it's very ripe as you can see. Some of them are starting to shrivel just a little bit. Right. What, what is it you look for? When, you know, when well, you're looking at the perfect grape to make a perfect wine. Well, basically, you you want ripe fruit. Okay. Because yeah. so if you got ripe fruit, you get you get good flavours yeah. and good colour. So this in this case, um, we pick them when they're when they're fully ripe and just starting to uh, to wizen to dry and dehydrate just just a fraction. We find we get the best. Uh, uh, rich sort of plummy, pruny sort of flavours out of this particular variety. So this this will come out at about 14% alcohol. When, so that, when that's quite high, up. isn't it? Yeah, but that's we, we, that's what we that's the style of wines that we make down here in the Alentejo. Right. And here the tractors at the back. Are they coming to pick up the grapes now? Yeah, they'll come and stack them on the back of uh, on a pallet, yeah. and then a forklift will put them on the back of a trailer, and the trailer will get them into the winery. So the whole operation, uh, we want to get the grapes picked and into the winery as quickly as possible, so that there's no sort of oxidation of the fruit, mm. so it doesn't get any hotter than it has to. So within half an hour of being picked, we'll have the fruit in the crushes and we're, you know, we're starting to make, uh, get the fermentation going. Yeah. So this is where our grapes that we've collected earlier on, that was my bunch, I can tell. This is where it's all ended up. What are we going to do with this lot now? OK, uh, at this stage it becomes very uh, lab laborious. We have to throw them in by hand into this grape receivable bin, yeah. which has a, a screw at the bottom which moves the, uh, the, the picked grapes into a, a crusher. The crusher basically uh, uh, separates the stems out and the skins and the juice are, are crushed through rollers into a pump and the pump then pumps uh, what we call this the must into a fermentation tank. Right. Okay, so then the process of fermentation takes so place. So everything has been done by hand so far, quite laboriously. This is where technology takes over. Once we get rid of this, yeah. yeah. So, okay then, grab the other end. Now you can see those, that screw, that looks quite, uh, quite hazardous, doesn't it? Yeah, you've got to keep, keep one away from that. That's not a nice way to go. No. This type of process, how long do you have just have to keep throwing this in? Is it a 12 hour operation? Or? Well, the, the, the great receivable part is, is, uh, is, is 12 hours. Right. And then, but we're going, we have two 12 hour shifts, so we're going 24 hours a day. Uh, because the fermentation process is, uh, is continuous and has to be monitored. And uh, there's the maceration, pumping over, temperature control. It's, right. uh, it, re it requires a, a lot of uh, attention and to now, detail. All this in six weeks. Yeah, it's very, it's very compact, very hectic. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's the most, it's the, it's the time of the year that we really look forward to because it's, uh, it's the creative part of the year when, uh, when, when we're making wine. After a hard day in the vineyard, sweating, toiling, hands red raw, <laughs> it's time for a drink. David, please tell us what we've got here. Okay, Doug. Um, well, um, in fact, we've got quite a range because of, uh, because of the quantity of wines that we make here. We've got uh, different wines, different styles, different price ranges. Right. Um, the important thing about all these wines are uh, that they're made from local Portuguese grape varieties. And yeah. I think that's, that's the strength of Portuguese wines and, and our particular wines here. Um, and that's the beauty of them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, going up the range, we've got um, Esperal Reserve White, which is a... Um, uh, barrel fermented uh, style, uh, which will taste. Um, this is your top of the range. This is the top of the range. And the, I've noticed the corks out. Does that mean we get to taste it? Absolutely. <laughs> it's a beautiful colour. Yeah. Well, this is our um, uh, Esperel Reserve uh, style, which means that it's been, um, it's made from um, fully ripe local grape varieties. Yeah. Um, so there's about 30% alcohol in the wine. 
So there's some lovely, lovely complexity and, and depth in that wine. Hmm? Have a go. I must be honest, I swallowed half of that. <laughs> Very nice it was too. You read, sir. Again, um, as with the whites, we have, uh, we have this sort of three-tiered quality range, which is a lander at the bottom, um, picnic style, Mont yeah. value in the middle, and then we have our special reserve uh, Esperanto, which we'll taste in a moment. Right. Um, but um, as well, we have, uh, as with the whites, we have four varietal wines. Um, we have Trincadeira and Aragonese, Bastardo and Terriga Nacional, and these are, these are our four Principal local varieties. As and a this general. one with a cork out should be drank. That one should. That one we should, should taste now. And this is this is a blended wine. Okay, so this is yep. not a. This is made from three or four of these varieties. Uh, we all, we actually believe that our best wines are always blended. Okay, we do the varietals just as a as a curiosity thing. Right, as a fun as a fun thing. Okay, so this is uh, hopefully a little more serious. Getting the hang of it now. I didn't even splash that time, did I? <laughs> um, but it's got it's got uh, lovely, rich, uh, mouth-filling fruit flavours. Uh, it lingers it's in your It's coated the palate. palate there, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> yep. And this was only bottled um, a few months ago, so right. it's it's, uh, it's we're releasing it now, but it uh, it'll improve over the next at least two to three to four years. It's certainly a shame to spit it out. Just swallowed that one. Going nice with roasted meats. Absolutely. <clears throat> Roasting grilled meats is beautiful. That's very nice indeed. Well, I'll have to leave you here, Maggie. I'm sure you're feeling sorry for me. Cheers.